Welcome to the Dr. Hotsey Report at the intersection of medicine and politics. Your host is Dr. Stephen Hotsey, founder and CEO of Hotsey Health and Wellness Center in Houston, Texas. Dr. Hotsey is a graduate of the University of Texas Medical School in Houston and has overseen the treatment of 45,000 patients. He has been a leader in the wellness revolution since 1989. Dr. Hotsey has hosted over 1,400 of his own radio programs and appeared on hundreds of other radio and TV programs across America. He's a renowned author, speaker, and conservative Christian patriot leader. Now, here's Dr. Hotsey and the Dr. Hotsey Report. Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Hotsey, and welcome to the Dr. Hotsey Report. Today, we're going to discuss with you a very ambitious plan initiated, developed uh, by William Owens. Uh, And William Owens is my guest on the program today. We're going to talk to you today about the project, book project, Why Jesus Matters. So William, thank you for joining us today. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing fantastic, Dr. Otsi. Thank you so much for having me. It's good to be with you today. Well, we're pleased to have you and I'm excited for you to share and for our listening audience to learn of this wonderful opportunity, how they can share their faith in writing and have it included in a book that can be distributed worldwide. So tell us about the Why Jesus Book Series uh, project. Why, what made you decide to develop this uh, project? You know, at least 2 billion people have not heard the name of Jesus Christ in the earth. And it's amazing how a story can change that. You know, the Bible says in Revelations that we overcame by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of of our testimony. testimony. Mm -hmm. And there's a power in a story. And what could be more powerful than the story of redemption? The story of redemption from your experience so one morning I woke up and I just saw this, this idea of why my faith in Jesus matters. All that we see happening in the world today, people are perplexed, people are worried. We see wars, rumors of wars. Um, there are so many forms of division, international levels, national level, and the community level. And the division is deep. And we as believers are the light of the world. There are all types of narratives, but the narrative that will endure forever is the narrative of salvation, of us giving our hearts to Jesus. And I believe with all my being, it's time for us to tell our story of why Jesus. And We have 14 different books, but the focus is why does Jesus matter? Why does he matter? Why does he matter to you? People can debate, have different opinions about who God is, and if there are several different gods, or one God, or two gods. But as Christians, we believe that Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. And there's given one name unto heaven by which man must be saved, and that's the man Christ Jesus. And our stories matter. And that's what the book series is about, a compilation of essays, stories, and testimonies from living Christians today that will be presented in a series of books that touch on every sector of life, whether it's children, marriage, home, athletes, I mean, you name it, it's gonna cover every aspect of it. So that's the vision, Dr. Holtzi, and and I'm very humbled by it. And it's not just me, it's other people who are involved with this project, writers, entrepreneurs, people who have experience in publishing. And so it's, it's it's a concerted effort, people who recognize we as believers must tell our story because somebody might not make it to church. They could reach over and read a story and Christ could reveal himself to them through your testimony. That's what the book series is about. Well, there's the old adage, the written word is more powerful than the sword. And it lasts, the written word lasts. There's one thing about giving your testimony at church, which I encourage people to do, or share your faith with other people. That's very important. When you put it in writing, though, it lasts. And it's something that can be passed from one person to another person without 
requiring you to be there. And in this particular book that you're developing, William, and I'm helping you develop, uh, Why yes. Jesus Matters, gives you an opportunity just in two or three pages to explain what difference Christ is making in your life. Maybe what difference he made in your life when you first received Christ and made a decision to turn from sin and turn to his salvation. It may be uh, you want to share that. Maybe you want to share what he's currently doing in your life right now, in your family's life, in your business life, in your personal life, how he's making a difference, how you were being used by him to advance the kingdom in whatever field you may be in, whether it's in medicine, whether it's in business, whether it's in sports, whether it's in civil government, how God is using you there and how Christ is making a difference there in your life and how it maybe makes a difference in your family life, how knowing Christ has changed the way you're raising your family and raising your children and relating to your children and to your grandchildren. This is just a tremendous opportunity for each one of us, each one of you, to simply write this out in in, uh, short form, three pages maybe. That's kind of what we're looking for is about 1,500 words. And we'd like to encourage you to participate in this. Now, to do that, you can go to a website. Tell us what website our listeners can go to to get a preview of what's going on and get get some more information, William. Well, this is exciting. Our website is whyjesusbookseries.com. And we're grateful to announce that we have our series of webinars coming up. Our first webinar is June 25th, and we're going to be holding them every two weeks. So one of the best ways to really understand this vision and how you can participate is to attend one of our webinars. And there's a registration link right on the website, whyjesusbookseries.com. Webinars are free to attend. And in the webinar, we go through all the details, even down to how those who are selected to be in the book actually will experience royalty overrides, how you can also earn an income from the books when they sell. Um, And so the whole theme behind this is we're merging writing with entrepreneurship and above all, evangelism, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ through our stories. So head on over to Why Jesus Book Series. Visit the site. Look at the different titles we have. Register for the next coming, the upcoming free webinar that we're going to be holding several times throughout the week. So that website is whyjesusmatters.com. Why Jesus Matters. Sorry, it's why Jesus Book Series. I'm sorry. Why Jesus Book Series.com. Correct. Yes. Why Jesus Book Series.com. I encourage you to go to that. Now, William, yes. um, you have done a tremendous job as people look at the the development of all the covers of the books that have been developed to the 14 different. We're going to have 14 different books that really deal with different um, different individuals in their particular role in life, whether they're athletes or whether they're uh, businessmen or parents, uh, whether they're students, they're going to each share, they're going to be a book about each one of those type of people. But the first book that's going to be published is Why Jesus Matters. And we right. That's the first one. And our goal is, is to come out with that book ready to be sold and distributed starting in November of this year. So we would encourage you to go to the website, the whyjesusbookseries.com, so you can become informed and, and prepare your testimony and write it, begin to write it out. Now, William, tell us some about your background first in book publishing and why this gives you really the ability to carry out this really a, it can be a massive project i mean these books literally could sell by the millions worldwide and be translated into numerous different languages that's yeah. what's really excited about it so what's your back i want to know your background uh in in publishing tell us about that Yes, Dr. Hosey, I, I wrote my first book in tears back in, um, wow, <laughs> I'm about to age myself. Uh, 
Wow, my first book was called Apostasy in the Church. I had been studying the book of Ezekiel, and I wrote that book at a kitchen table, and um, that was my first book. And I was so moved. Um, there was a big church conference going on, and I knew I had to get it printed. So I ran to Kinko's. You remember Kinko's back in sure. the day? And I made copies and put a spiral binder on it, and I must have printed maybe 500 and sold them. My second book was Strive to Enter. And my third book, um, yes, it was uh, Bion Protocol. So, Dr. Holtzi, I've been writing for years. I've written 16 books by the grace of God. Um, God promoted me from Kinko's, and we started understanding the publishing industry. In Perfect Bound came about. Along with that, the digital age began to really develop and print on demand, and Amazon came forth. And, and So I've been in the publishing industry now for over 30 years, and I've helped numerous people bring their books to life, probably close to 100 different books. And so this vision God has prepared me for over the years. I'm also a poet, written several poems, to say the least, by the grace of God, have two books of poetry out. And so, in what fact, name, one of the books the is of, called Poets. What are the name of those Sorry. books? The poet book, my, poetry. My, um, my recent book is Journey by Faith. And... The poetry book is Poems for America. In fact, during the elections of 2016, I wrote a poem every day for 50 days up until the election. That's Poems for America. Uh, another book is called Warriors Arise, Divine Protocol, and several other titles. And so I moved to encourage others to write. You know, I was in prayer this morning, and one of the things I said in prayer was, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And when I said every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, the Holy Spirit quickened me and say, well, William, what did I do with the words that were spoken out of my mouth? He wrote them down. He wrote them down. Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God has been written. And so if God saw the importance of having his word that he spoke out of his mouth, how much more important would it be for us to do the same? And that's to write our testimonies. We want to talk about it, but there's a different form of communication when we write them. So having 30 years experience in the publishing industry, I believe God has equipped me and prepared me to understand the dynamics of this. We not only are going to be publishing the books, but we are also setting up a very unique form of distribution. And that's where Christian entrepreneurs will play an exciting role in this to where we are allowing people to actually team up with us to become distributors in their specific city or state or wherever they might be. We have several different methods of doing that. And I might add, the reason why we're doing that is because of these two words, cancel culture. Distribution is not what it used to be, Dr. Hoxie. There's a lot of algorithms that are programmed on the internet now to make it difficult for those who share the Christian faith or any idea that's contrary to the system to really be found. And you just never know what's going on. So, I mean, even Amazon has been exposed for some practices that are absolutely um, controlling the flow of product and distribution. You know, so um, the whole program is designed to not just publish, but to, to, to distribute. And we're inviting people to be involved in numerous ways. Well, that's what's exciting about it. And initially, of course, the book's going to be written in English um, right. initially. But, folks, what can be done once we get the book up and running and off the ground and show that there's a demand for this, then it can be translated into other languages. Probably the first language we'll translate it into would be Spanish. But just because of you know, the nearness to America and all everything south of the Texas border, all the way down to the uh, the Cape, uh, down down to the end of South America, it's all Spanish primarily. There are there is Brazil, which is Portuguese, but primarily there's hundreds of millions, hundreds of millions of Spanish speaking people in South America. Right. This can be distributed to, and that's the plans is to take this and use this to help 
fulfill Christ's command that he gave his apostles and disciples yeah. in uh, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. He said, he said uh, all authority has been given to me in heaven on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, not just peoples, but of nations. Now, to get nations, you've got to get people. And those right. people in the nations have to be one to Christ, and then they have to be involved in running the nation and bringing each nation back under the authority of God's sovereignty. So go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, teaching them to observe everything that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. So we know there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There's going to be a tremendous outpouring of the gospel in the latter days. Now, are we in the latter days or not? Sometimes I wake up and say, it's obvious we're in the latter days. I know people have thought this for thousands of years, mm -hmm. but it just seems the way things are going you wonder how they can get any worse. And with tech, the way te you. technology is, the reason I, the reason I think, think that is because it, in, in revelations, it talks about the antichrist rising up and then being killed and then coming back to life. It's a, it, you know, Satan always tries to duplicate. He's the antichrist. He tries to duplicate Christ in every way. He wants to take all the authority that's been given by the father to the son. He wants to take that authority and he's going to be killed. And then he's going to come back to life. And it says that all the peoples of the world will see this and believe in the antichrist. Now you think about that written 40 years ago, or maybe a hundred years ago, how would that even have been possible? If you think about the thousands of years that the Bible is, we've had the Bible and that statements, this is in revelations. How, would, how could have that happened? How could everybody see it? But now each one of us has some kind of iPhone or Android phone that we can look at and people can, right. you know, we can uh, communicate with one another, with people around the world. You can do FaceTime and you can see it. So all these right. things. So, <laughs> so it's possible now for, for the whole world to see the Antichrist killed and then be brought right. back to life. That's possible to do that. That's what makes me think, well, this, this is possible now that we are in the end times. And then I've been reading the book of Jude, and uh, that's about the apostasy in the church. I'd highly recommend anybody uh, or everybody read the epistle of Jude, which is 27 verses. It's one of the shortest books of the Bible. I think the second, uh, Second John and Third John are, are slightly shorter, but it's only 27 verses. But it talks about what happens when the church becomes apostate and is given over to all the carnal uh, desires and the perversions, the debauchery that goes with those people that follow in the pathway of Sodom and Gomorrah, which we're doing right now. So mm -hmm. that's why this particular book the Why Jesus book series is so important. We want to make sure that we get the message of Christ's death and resurrection, resurrection, his death for our sins and resurrection, and the promise of life. Jesus said that, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. Jesus also said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. There's only one way. There's not multiple gods. All the people of the earth aren't worshiping the same God. They have different gods they worship. We know that we worship the one true God through his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and we're filled with the Holy Spirit. So that's where we place our faith. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is also the water of life. And he is, he is the resurrection and the life. And he said, if anyone believes in me, he shall live even if he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And then he asked Mary this, and he asked you this, do you believe this? So you either believe it or not. And Jesus also, uh, it's also said that whoever calls upon Jesus as Lord and believes that God raised him from the dead shall be saved. They'll be so saved. Our goal in this book is to help individuals that are lost in sin, come to know that they can be redeemed and saved and changed. It also says in the scripture, Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. 
and he and he said that if any man, this is what Paul wrote: if any man or woman be in Christ, they become a new creature. Old things right. pass away; all things become new. So we become new as we play, place our faith in Christ. And Paul also said that uh, we live by faith and not by sight. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life which I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and delivered himself up for me. And God demonstrated his own love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And this is the and message, I think, this is the and, message and I, we want to bring to um, everyone through these books. And you can share right. those of you that know Christ personally as your Savior, Mm -hmm. frankly, you have an obligation to tell other people about this. Why hide That's the right. truth? You've got the message of life. We ought to be sharing it with everybody we possibly can. And, and one way to, that's why I think you specifically should write out your story and your testimony of why Jesus matters in your life. Now, I know, William, uh, you've been on a crusade worldwide sharing the gospel. And I know uh, that you've gone to, of all places, Southeast Asia and traveled yes. to Vietnam and Cambodia and Bang all over. So tell us something about that. When did you, when did you decide to do that? How, how long uh, have you been doing that? It's been about seven years. You know, um, you were very instrumental, Dr. Holsey, in helping me begin this type of evangelism. I, I did a thousand miles on my bike in America, if you recall. I rode my bike from Nevada all the way to Texas, sharing the gospel. I uh, had my bike, of some few change of clothes and, and uh, four bags and just riding and sharing and meeting people. Well, it went from America to Philippines, from the Philippines to Singapore. Been from Singapore to Indonesia, I've been to Thailand, I've been to Australia, and now I'm in Vietnam. And so it was in Vietnam that Lord gave me this mandate to collect stories and essays and testimonies. And to your point, what you were sharing about the scripture, about how Christ has transformed our lives. When people read a story, they see, they, they experience the word of God come alive. They they experience, they might not see it that way in terms of the word of God coming alive because some of them might not know the word. Some of them perhaps not have not really heard of Jesus in this fashion. So when you share your story, you're putting flesh and blood, you're putting actual life circumstances into this dynamic. So it's not just religion. We're not talking about it from a religious perspective perspective. We're talking about it from a life perspective. When you add these dynamics, we read somebody's story who submitted their story to be considered to be in the book, and it was it moved me to tears. I just I was so moved by her story, how God delivered her from strongholds, from witchcraft, and and, and it's just amazing at the people who are beginning to submit their stories, how they're just moved. And I tell you, the devil hates it when we tell our story. He hates it when we write our story because I believe when we write the story in the earth, it's going to follow us into the heavens. Our rewards will follow us. Our works will follow us. And the reason why it's special to God is because it's a sacrifice. Let me just add that there's so many things in the earth today that, that are serving as a major distraction for what's important. Some of the things that Jesus spoke about, the cares of this world, choke the word. The cares of this world will distract many. Well, let me tell you, it's important that a Christian put their time where it really matters. And why my faith in Jesus matters? What could be more important than our faith? And what could be more important than sharing our faith? We're talking souls here. Souls are at stake right now. And God wants to use every means possible to let the world know his son has died for your sins. You can be forgiven. Works will not do it. Only faith in Jesus alone. And them coming to understand that could be made so powerful when they read your story, when they read your story. So we're encouraging people to go to the website, whyjesusmatters.com. 
whyjesusbookseries.com. <laughs> Click on attend the webinar, or you can begin to submit a uh, your soft submission now. You give your give your story a working title. Share with us a few sentences or paragraph, few paragraphs about your testimony. It's absolutely free to do that. We will review that and let you know that you can go ahead and submit the entire story. And the reason why we do that, we want to be sure that these stories line up and they're biblical. We want to be sure that they're authentic. So begin the process. And, and this is what it's about. And to your point about these books being available, world, we're already, um, we went to Rome to do a lot of research and to do some videos there. We're going back to Rome. There's a huge evangelistic move taking place in Rome starting in December where millions of pilgrims are coming back to Rome to, to, to affirm their, their faith from, from a Catholic perspective. Well, we're going to be there and tell them why Jesus. <laughs> so we'll have some books there with them as well. So it's, a, it's an amazing journey, Dr. Holtzi, and I'm so grateful to the Lord for it. And People are, are beginning to share and submit their stories, and we want to invite those who are listening right now, don't hesitate, do the same, because there's only 75 to 100 spots per book, so time is limited and space is limited, so respond as soon as possible. Well, we want to encourage you to do that. William, I'd, I know you have uh, sent me um, by, uh, numerous different videos of the interactions you've had with the people in Southeast Asia, which have been just absolutely fascinating. And mm. interestingly, many of those people do speak English that you've met yes. and been able to communicate, which is uh, kind of interesting that they, I'm surprised that they do. Why is that? Do they teach English in the schools? Well, absolutely. In fact, a lot of people, they call them expats, those who are not from this country, but they come in from different countries. They come here to teach English. A lot of people here in Vietnam come here to work and they teach English at a lot of the schools, um, a lot of private schools, and not only English, there's a lot of people here who teach German and French. Um, so it's a very progressive place and people are learning English here. A lot of the young people, of course, they teach English in school. So when they see me, they always walk up to me and say, hey, can, can I practice my English on you? And I say, okay, sure. <laughs> and, uh, Little do they know that you're going to end up uh, using that as an opportunity to share Christ with them when they come up. And I'm they, telling you, and I do. I know you do that. Tell yes. me, uh, they're in, uh, and you're living in Hanoi now. Um, how's the cost of living over there? <laughs> <laughs> you sure you want me to tell you that, Doctor? You sure you want me to tell people that? I don't think they'll like you. <laughs> well, I, I got, um, I'm living outside of Hanoi, not right inside the city. But let's just put it like this. I, I just got my electric bill um, for the month, Dr. Holtzi. And um, it was a whopping $27. $27, okay. huh? <laughs> I, just, I just had lunch the other day, a half a duck. It had been roasted. Half a duck was $6. Wow. And so when I get my hair cut, um, my hair cut is um, $3. So... <laughs> That kind of gives you an eye. I can get a fish about the size of my forearm for two dollars and fifty cents, and 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 it's still alive when I buy it. They 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 knock it out. <laughs> then I can get it cooked for another two dollars and fifty cents. So there you have it. It's it's um, it's um, it's a beautiful place, and I think you know when God restores you, sometimes He just makes your money go a little farther. You know? I'm telling you what, and, uh, well, that's that's amazing. Tell me about this about. Uh, religious freedom in Hanoi and in Vietnam? Yes, you know, it's a communist country. Um, and um, there's a church here that uh, I've been attending, and they've been here for 30 years. You have to have the permission of the state to have a church here. You can't proselyte. You can't go out and street witness on the corners with the Bible and the bulletin. But yet you, you do, do that, that anyway. Well, I do it one-on-one. -on -one. You can have conversations right. with you can sit down at a coffee shop and you can talk with people. And if they want to talk, you can share, your, you can share the gospel with them. I, I met someone and they were telling me they had acid reflux. And I asked if I could pray for them. And they know I'm a Christian. They said, well, I'm not a Christian. I said, well, you don't have to be for me to pray for you. And um, they said, okay, you can pray for me. And I did. And they said, wow, I feel a little better. And so um, 
you know, I'm sharing Christ with people. And in fact, you know, I'm a musician. I play the djembe, which is a which is an instrument. It's a it's a drum. And there's a coffee shop. I'm reaching for it to show it to you. There's a coffee shop in the area, and they have me to come play sometimes. So this is my djembe. Yeah. And um, and so they have me to play it, and I only play it to Christian music. So you know, so there's Christian music playing, and and I'm I'm playing my djembe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's wonderful. Well, you're out there uh, doing what Christ commanded us to do is to go there for and share the gospel and uh, teach the, uh, preach the word in season and out of season. Amen. Uh, that's right. And you're doing that and setting an example, living exactly what you're encouraging everyone that's listening to do is to learn to share your faith in Jesus Christ. It's the only hope. Look, it's the only hope. You look what's going on in the world today. It's satanic and demonic, mm. and there it's Satan's coming out front. They have satanic clubs in government schools. They're teaching transgenderism and homosexuality is normal to little children. They're proselytizing right. little children in sin. They're grooming them to be part of their perverted and debauched pervert perverted and debauched activities and, and human sacrifice as well human sacrifice is something that's happened. pedophilia and human sacrifice and of course this this went on in biblical times you know that's it, right as the jews israelites turned away and followed after the people in the uh, neighboring countries they began to worship their gods baal and Moloch, and they sacrificed their children to these idols well this is going on today as hard as that is to believe the children are being captured from all over the world and they're being sold into slavery. I mean, this is demonic to the core. And you ask yourself, why isn't something being done about it? We know what happened on Epstein Island and all the no. version that went on there. And they have the logs of everybody that flew into that island. And they know they have the videotapes of everybody was there and what went on. And yet there are no arrests. So you got to believe that there are higher authorities in the FBI, CIA, and in different governmental agencies that are participating in this uh, activity. And they don't want to reveal it. And uh, you know, using, real quick, using it, you know, they're using it as blackmail. So we're up against demonic forces but we know this is that that our war is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers, right. the powers the world forces of darkness against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places now those wicked mm -hmm. demonic forces do possess people people give themselves over to serve satan sure. to allow right. themselves to be demonically possessed and one thing believers have the power to do is by laying hands on people, we can cast out demons and we can heal people. And right. we need to be doing that. I don't know if you've done, a, done any of any cast out any demons. Have you, have you cast out any demons on your journeys? Have you had any demonic force? You've had to have demonic forces come against you. I've had confrontations. I could tell I had confrontations with people who were heavily demonic, demonically influenced. And in my ministry, I have, confronted evil spirits in people in my ministry and um it's been it's been very candid very real and this is why it's so important to know we're walking with the lord and, and to your point about children um one of the books is called why jesus loves the little children and so do i so if you have a burden for children we have one book that's called education the problem and the solution and why jesus so these books kind of focus on our children and so you know, if you have a burden, for children, if you've had an experience how Jesus has blessed a child or how he wants to bless a child and why we must be a voice for children, that's where essays come in. That's where stories come in, testimonies. So you learn more about that book as, as you visit the website, whyjesusbookseries.com. Well, that's, and, and Jesus spoke in, in Matthew 18 specifically about children and protecting children he said anyone right. that causes these little ones to turn away it would be better if they had better. a millstone wrapped around their neck and thrown into the deep blue sea it would wow. be better for them if they better had, yeah and that's bad enough so i i've uh i've coined uh, what we need to do here in texas we need to have an operation millstone anyone that 
molests or grooms little children, that sexualizes little children, that ought to be a capital offense. They've done that in Georgia, in Florida. It's a capital offense in Florida, and wow. which means it's death penalty. And I think the way they ought to um, carry out the death penalty for those that are pedophiles, they ought to take them and they ought to put a millstone around their neck and they ought to sail them out into the Gulf of Mexico and throw them overboard. That's what you need to do with them. I guarantee you do that a few times. That puts a stop to it. Uh, I'm telling you. It's what's happened down in, uh, I happened to watch Tucker Carlson interview the president of. Yes, I saw that as well. And their crime is like. (laughs) They just got it. They just got tough on crime, so we're not going to put up with it. And then, and then the president, his name I think is Ukele, or it's, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it, but the president of El Salvador said, "In America, you all allow people to go in and steal its stores. They can just shoplift up to a thousand dollars." He said, "That's the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. Who would do? Who does that? Who allows that?" All you're doing is promoting evil and criminality in people's lives. You've got to put a stop to that. And that's what we've done. And that's what, you know, that guy would be, he would, he'd be quite a leader here in the country. Our leaders need to look at what he's done instead of pandering to the criminals. And it appears to me because of the demonic forces in our society, we've got people in our society running our government that are criminals. We have the criminals running the government. And so they protect the criminals that are robbing, raping, plundering, murdering, and killing. And they're, they're protecting those people and the people that are, are being demeaned and run down and censored and canceled are Christians that stand for their faith. They call us Christian nationalists. Well, I'm proud to be a Christian and I'm proud of America. I'm here in America and I'm a Texan. And I'm proud of that. You can call me a Christian nationalist. I'm proud to be a Christian nationalist. I do believe that America was founded on Christian founded. principles, That's on right. the Bible, and, it, and we need to maintain those values of our founding fathers. And that's clear that they were, they had a biblical faith and that was founded. Our nation was founded on biblical principles. And for those that deny that are just liars. And they want to cancel out that whole history of our nation Mm -hmm. and have people adopt a socialist, Marxist, communist view where there is no God. If there's no God, then anything goes. That means if I'm the ruler, I can do whatever I want to do. I'm the final authority. So, you know, in the books, what's he's called? in, in, In sharing our faith in Christ, we need to understand that our faith in Christ just doesn't change us and help us be better people, but we need to take our faith in Christ and the strength that we, and the power in Christ, and we need to oppose and bring down those evil structures. They need to be brought down, you know, no weapon formed against us should prosper. We've got to destroy those weapons and we've got to proclaim Christ. So to a new generation or else we've lost our country. That's right. You know, the book that, uh, if you talk about these issues from a political perspective, One of the books that I'm really excited about is called King Jesus, Spiritual Apostasy, and Political Injustice. So those who have a heart for apologetics, you are in politics from a truth perspective. This is the book for you to write and address these issues. You know, this book series doesn't avoid politics. I don't know why Christians think we're not to be involved in politics. I mean, come on. Jesus is the king. The government. Jesus is the king. king of the He's the king of the universe. Read He's Psalm the king. He's two. Very anybody, anybody that thinks Christians shouldn't be involved in politics needs to read Psalm 2. I'm telling you. you read, because the nations, are, you know, the kingdoms of the world, the kings of the world and the rulers raise up their hand and they shake it. Yes. God, they want to get rid of his standards and his values. And God just laughs at them, holds them in his derision. He said, I've raised up my king. And my king on the mountain. That's the Lord Jesus Christ, who is King of that's kings right. and Lord of Lords. And God's and the Lord of Lords is the standard by which we should conduct our lives. As a matter of fact, our laws, English common law, was founded and based upon what? The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. That's right. And you know what? I don't think you could pass one of the uh, I, right now, you couldn't pass the Ten Commandments in any legislature in the country. It just wouldn't, many of those, they just totally would 
uh, abhor because they hate God's law and they hate God's rule. And that's what we as Christians want to see brought about. They said, well, you want a theocracy, sir. We are living in a theocracy. You all are just being disobedient to the (laughs) king. You just don't realize when he comes back, you're going to find out, yes, sir, there is a theocracy in the universe. And it's the Lord God who has set himself up in the heavenly places. He set up his throne there. He does according to his will among the hosts in heaven and the inhabitants of earth, and no one can stay his hand or question what he's done. All power, all honor, all glory, all majesty, all dominion, all victory belongs to him, the King of Kings. It says, you know, you can go to, um, I believe it's in Psalm 24, lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting words, that the King of glory glory might come in. Who is the King of glory? the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. So for all those that are living in rebellion, and particularly the leaders that are living in rebellion to God, God's going to have the last word in this. I pray that those people might come to know Christ and repent of their sins. God can take any man living in sin and change him. But if they don't, then we just ask, my prayer is if if they won't repent and publicly repent and take a penalty for their area and they decide to continue to follow Satan, well, then God's our king and we ask him to command victories for us, to push back our adversaries. Let us tread upon those who rise up against us. Put to shame all those who hate us. Let them stumble and fall. Break the cord of their wickedness in two. May coals of fire, fire and brimstone and a burning wind be a portion of their cup. May they fall into the pit that they've dug for the righteous and never rise again. That would be our, that's what is called a, an imprecatory prayer praying against God's enemies that refuse to repent. And that's, that's a prayer I pray daily um, for those that are enemies of God that are trying to destroy our families, our culture, our, our Christian faith, trying to destroy the churches. That's my prayer that God would have his way with them. And uh, you know, sooner you know, or he measures, he measures the nations and the way he measures the nations he says that they're but a drop in the bucket. He says, I'm sorry, say that again. The nations are but a drop in the bucket. Right. And so if if we understand that, we need to never hesitate to proclaim and declare the truth. And that's what the Why Jesus book series is about. So you have a burden. God has given you a burden. If you are a Christian, if you are a believer, God has called you for a purpose. This is the day that we work. Our labors will not be in vain. Those who come to him must believe that he is, that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me in this adulterous and wicked generation, I'll be ashamed of you before my father and the angels. So it's not time for us to be ashamed. It never is. We need to write our stories, write our essays, share our testimonies. And the Why Jesus book series has a book that fits the burden he's given you. And, and, the, and King Jesus, uh, spiritual apostasy, there's a lot of false doctrine in the earth today. In fact, one of our books is called Jesus Hates the Doctrines of the Scribes and Pharisees. And I don't want to leave out why Jesus loves the home and the, why, and the women, wives, and mothers who make them. And then we have another book called Jesus Loves to Cook, and so do I. So it's a book of recipes and the stories behind them. And then there's another book called Why Jesus Loves Real Men. And so these books are just going to be a great resource. Uh, When you see these books on the shelves of homes, people will be reaching for these books to read a story, to read an experience, maybe to cook a dish. You have a chance for your story to be in one of these books, why it's time, why it's available. The Why Jesus Book Series Dot com will give you all the information. Register for our upcoming webinar that's taking place in um, the, 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 the last Tuesday of this month, which I believe oh, is how long will that webinar? How long will that webinar last? Webinars are about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. They're not long. We get right to it and show you how to take a step. You can even go to the website and begin the soft submission now. 
you can you can register for the webinar, but also submit a working title, which means you can change the title, and a few paragraphs about your story, and you'll begin the process. It's all automated. Just go right to it and begin the process. And, and that is, that's program. the website is the Why Jesus Book Series dot com. Why? Right. Without, yeah, oh, why Jesus book series. Why Jesus book series dot com. I want to encourage you to go to that now and um, take a look, take a look at the, some of the videos on there so you can understand and take a look at the n different books that are going to be that are planned uh, for production in the in the coming months and years ahead and sign up to be part of this. I want to encourage you to do that. I want to thank you, William Owens, for joining us today. Yes. Thank you for this wonderful um, willingness to allow God to use you to bring about this Why Jesus Matters uh, book series. So thank you so much thank for you. being with us. Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Hotze. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you fed up with your doctor giving you drugs simply to mask your symptoms rather than treating the cause? As you age, I believe you should be brimming with energy, vitality, and enthusiasm for life. The Hotze Health and Wellness Center treats individuals from all over the country and world in an environment of extraordinary hospitality. We specialize in the treatment of allergies, yeast, replenishing natural hormones, vitamin and mineral supplementation, and a healthy eating lifestyle, all of which boost your immune system, increase your energy level, and your health span. If you'd like to obtain and maintain health and wellness naturally without pharmaceutical drugs, then contact one of our wellness consultants today at 281 698-8698 or visit hotchwc.com and request a free copy of my best-selling book, Hormones, Health, and Happiness. Dr. Hotze here, it's allergy season. The sticky green pollen on your car is kryptonite if you have allergies, fatigue, headaches, sinus and chest congestion, wheezing, sneezing, asthma, or just itchy eyes can make you miserable. Allergies can be treated safely, effectively, conveniently without drugs. No allergy shots either. We treat our allergy patients with allergy drops under the tongue in the comfort of their home. Are you suffering from allergies? Call Hotsey Health and Wellness Center today.